Peace. So a while back, V Rising has received a major update, Secrets of Gloomrod. This has brought in new enemy units, new V-type carriers, new locations on the map. However, as I have already two videos under the belt, I'm sure I will do quite well. And I'm dead. I will be able to get better weapons. And I died. Even better armor. Uh, dead again. Well, I guess this new update is going to be even more challenging than I thought, but that is a good thing, as it will allow for a lot of fun, and so sit back, relax, and please do not try to suck someone's blood. I know girls are into Twilight, but neither one of us has the looks to pull that off, so instead enjoy the video, and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We do fun things here on the channel. Night 1 I woke up during the day as all good bloodsuckers do, but this one decided to not spend the day at the office and train the life out of his co-workers, but instead he decided to go through the cemetery and head out into the western part of the map. From my first observation, the initial woods have not undergone that many changes until- OH MY GOD LOOK AT THE SIZE OF THAT SPIDER! I don't think my flip flop would be able to kill that thing, Damn it. Really? More spiders? They could not have gone for a ladybug? But, oh well. I worked towards a place where I used to have my initial castle during my first playthrough of the game, and I have noticed that the devs have removed the day-night counter. Now it just says that the sun is up. Why would you remove the day and night indication? Do you know how difficult it is to count beyond the 11 fingers on my hand? I just hope I won't lose track of things. Day 1, I started to clear out the remains of this dump. Man, whoever used to have a castle here did know nothing about interior design. What an idiot. Hey, wait a minute. Did I not used to have a castle in here? Night 2, I started to learn about the depths into which the devs have gone to turn this chapter of Twilight into an interesting story. Like the fact of how now you do not have the altar to track V carriers, but you have them in a menu. Almost like an advent calendar where square by square you get to the final piece of chocolate. Or in this case, an involuntary blood donor. Now I know that the wolf is going to be first on the menu and I cannot wait as transferring into a wolf form is one of my favorite ways to travel around. I know. What kind of a vampire am I to transform into a wolf? Day 2. So I started to roam around and hunt few creatures and bandits and I came across a new resource. Bowlen. Seriously, what am I going to kill someone by making their nose all stuffy? I also started to gather new resources which are copper coins. Now my previous videos I wasn't really thrilled about having to smelt golden chains into golden bars so that I can start crafting resources, but apparently there has been a major rework to the in-game currency, and so now I will not need apparently 200 silver coins for one seed of Highland Lotus, but there are copper coins, silver coins, and golden coins even. Damn, it's like almost someone listened to what I was complaining about in the previous videos. Night 3, I was not sure if I should go after the first V carrier yet because I was starting to process copper, but as I needed like 16 copper bars without any boost of production for just the sword, I said suck it, and so I did. And I really don't know why people are so obsessed with dogs. I mean that alcohol Taste tasted so terribly wrong, and that smelly fur, yuck. On my way back home, I was not sure if I should be messing with the higher rank EV carriers, but since I was so close to the lumber mill, I fought another carrier, and to my shock, I was victorious. This one definitely did taste a lot better. Night 4, I contemplated what to do with the copper ingots, and I decided to go with the copper sword, because I was already able to obtain the tomb of Merciless Copper Sword. I was not able to upgrade it to that stage yet, as I am still missing blueprints for crafting things and along the way to the copper mines, I came across few bugs, like copper deposits and walls, 
or wolf stuck in the wall, but I'm guessing that is because when they rearranged the map, they did not check everything properly. Good thing they have two paid cosmetic DLCs on Steam. Night 5, I continued to pillage the copper mines and I battled the bee carrier and I had fun fighting him as I believe I have better understanding of some of my abilities and so I'm able to stay in combat for longer. I was however especially intrigued by this bad icon, which if I understand correctly can further expand my storage capacity on my vampire. If that is true, that is a blueprint or an item I need to acquire ASAP. Now to just track down that pesky frost archer so I can start processing her into leather. On night 6 I went to the trapper camp and this time I did not even bother releasing the bears. I just focused the frost archer in order to take her down. I was however not sure if I can start tackling the next set of V carriers as later that night I ran into some militia which wandered into the woods and started battling the poachers and they were too tough for me ending up almost killing me in the process. This means that I will definitely require better armor if I want to attack the next V carriers and get more unlockable research or spells. Day 6, I wanted to go back to the trapper camp because of all the bears and wolves as I ran out of hide to turn into leather and start upgrading my armor properly and holy crap what is that? Night 7, I was able to return to the camp and play with all the bears which allowed me to collect quite a lot of resources so I can start processing the leather and upgrade my castle heart to second tier and thus expand the foundation upon which I will build walls that will give me shade during the day so I can stop using the brazier. Night 8, I went around terrorizing the local bandits and in the process I was gathering resources as I know in order to finish the first castle base I will need more wood but I would rather leave playing with big logs for the day, I mean chopping down trees. The combination of abilities was becoming more and more deadly and I was remembering correctly that I will need either a bomb or bear form to break through these doors of the bandit fort. Day 8, I wanted to return back home as my pockets of my pants had all this wood in them and when I came across the Chaos Archer and being the knucklehead that I am, I wanted to show her but she freaked out and started to shoot at me so I fought her in a real dumb spot during the day and somehow I survived. I guess you can say she could not handle the hard wood. <laughs> Night 9, I went back to my base and I started to work on processing things as I was wondering about when the blood moon will come and which one of the V carriers to focus on. I guess if I would go after the fire guy and defeat him in the sulfur mines, which is a death trap on its own, I can make a bomb and explode the doors so I can then make the whetstone. I will need an alchemy station so that will be fun and probably you guessed it, sulfur. I guess it's easier planned than trying to go after that oversized yogi bear in its cave and get mauled to death. Well, if I'm undead, can I get mauled to death? Night 10. Most people celebrate their first milestone by doing something good. Something to show that they know what they are doing. I'm not that person apparently as I started to fight inside the sulfur mines but I made one mistake during the engagement and I got too aggressive soaking up too much damage. Now I could swear that the first death should not have occurred and the enemy V carrier was one attack from death but I guess all the fireworks had me distracted so I will need to try again. Night 11 I screwed up as I thought what the hell the boss uses attacks with splash damage, I don't need that shield. And I hopped into the mines and got turned into shish kebab from all the arrows quite fast. So I had to try again and I was kind of right with not needing the damn shield as I was finally able to take out the sulfur mines boss. However that one death is a warning of how not to rush into things because you can literally screw up days and nights of preparations this way. Day 11 I was worried during my trip home as I found out that I will have the blood moon already and this is nothing but problems as I don't have the alchemy workbench yet for the bomb. But I definitely need the whetstone so things are going to get interesting. 
Night 12, I was worried as I was at the base upgrading the sword and my leggings. Yes, apparently in order to rip few throats, I need to wear sweatpants. Anyhow, I realized that processing of the sulfur would be too long and I would not be able to reach the boss of the bandit camp and his fort, so I went after Gorswine the Ravager and man, why did I have to fight him in such a dumb spot? I don't know. But what I do know is that he is off I my kill stronger. list. Night 13, I was determined to blow up the gate and get to my next B carrier, but I got them all mixed up and I ended up going after the one with the wet skill. I think it's the king of the bandits who I need to get in order to blow up the gate or something. I was all eager to head out and that feeling changed as I jumped onto the map and Tristan the vampire hunter was there. I have never seen a vampire jump behind a rock in my life so fast. But I was able to get to my target, take him out, and I was trying to be careful on my way out. As from my previous experience, I actually managed to die because a wave of units appeared out of thin air and they managed to kill me because I was already fighting additional units. Oh yeah, the links to the videos and the playlist, that's all in the video's description. Just to let you know, I kind of need the views. Night 14, I upgraded my first piece of armor into the Merciless status and I went to battle the big boss, skipping through a few of the enemy heroes like the bear. My god, I'm not looking forward to that. But I was hoping that by defeating him, I would be able to venture into the farmstead and go inside the Forsaken Mines and try to get out as much iron as I can. Going through the camp itself was difficult, but I was powered by 90% something blood and it was showing as immediately after feeding on some lower percentage of alcohol and blood, I was moving around much more slowly. Now to just wait out the day and see if I can tango with the boss of bandits himself. Night 15, I fought the bandit leader and I almost had him, but I unfortunately died. I think I made a mistake with those healing orbs that now apparently all bosses drop. My mistake was that I used two of them and that kind of screwed up with my healing. So I made another bomb as I was sure I would need to blow up the gate and to my shock it was still gone. So I proceeded to clear up the camp as I did not want to make it up the hill with army of bandits behind my back. Night 16 was truly a fun time as I went for round 2 with the bandit leader and this time keeping those healing orbs and using potions that empower spell power even after death I was able to get him and therefore I unlocked the knowledge of smithing iron. This I will need as I want to make iron weapons. I was also a little cocky as I took down one of those corpse piles and it was an interesting fight. Good source of bone dust but now I have to think about what to do next. Do I need to focus on getting to the iron mines or maybe collecting paper for the floors so I can craft with higher efficiency as my first castle structure is finished? I will have to think this through and find out also what are these damn amulets to empower spells that I keep finding everywhere. Well, night 17 was a bust as I went to the farmstead to gather iron, but when I found this one iron deposit outside, I found out that I need a merciless mace, so I'm screwed. I also ran into Jacob's fan club member and I ran away. There were also these new NPCs which were roaming around in cloaks and I was really cautious about them as what if I assault one and bam, it's a vampire hunter. The curiosity got the best of me and I killed one of but nothing happened. Maybe I need to kill these people so they drop the cloak so I can trade with the merchants by the base of my operations. One of them sells books, but when in the older version one Highland Lotus seed was 200 silver, I don't even want to know how much would I need to pay for a freaking book. Night 18, I traveled around the map trying to collect paper, but I was not happy as after visiting a lot of camps, all I had were 15 pages and I knew that now I can have paper pressed by defeating the V carrier at the Forsaken Cemetery, but knowing very well how annoying it was to deal with him, I knew I would need an iron sight first. 
Night 19, I decided to head to the copper mines because last time I was there, two golden chests appeared and that can mean paper. I was able to find one in the lumber yard, but its content was as useful as an umbrella during a hurricane. Shockingly, I did manage to obtain 18 pages and two books, both for the same recipe of merciless boots, so they will need to be recycled. Damn it, one book that I need and again, 40 recipes that can be researched. I'm loving these odds. Night 20 was another milestone and I have to say I had zero ideas of what to do. So I decided to summon the future grad. I think I even got killed by the damn thing before, but this time I barely survived and my base looked like it had gone through a plate's tail requiem. I'm just afraid that once again there is no real purpose for these sheep shifting spells with the exception of the wolf, bear and bat. If I will again be stuck in the swamp with that Stupid toad, I will be pissed. Day 20, so I'm kind of glad that I started to look into things when it comes to content for Gloomrod. As I went out and I tried trading with the merchants, and despite being a vampire, it worked. I guess in the Dunley farmlands, however, they do not take kindly to my kind. But I was able to get the books, and indeed now I have copper, silver, and even gold coins. So I'll need to collect that money, as previously it was pointless, but now I can become I'm one rich Twilight fanfiction writer. Night 21. So being quick with the maze, I went to the iron mines and immediately I felt like a fish out of water or like a vampire in a farmer's market with all the garlic variety or in the bakery with all the latest garlic bread dishes. I had to be really careful in order to avoid engagements and try to sneak to the deposits to mine the iron as I will need a lot of it to make the forge and also the site. Day 21 I started to use the crossbow in the mines and thanks to the distance I was able to keep between me and the mages and all the other units I was able to gather a decent amount of iron but I wanted more and thus maybe pushing my luck I was contemplating jumping out of the mines or returning back. Night 22. So I managed to stay a little longer and I was running dangerously low on blood which made me do some risky activity like sucking on some archer's blood while two guys were spanking me from behind. This somehow managed to save my life but when I saw Meredith the bright archer approaching my heart skipped a beat or six. I finally managed to go home with 12 stacks full of iron ore which according to my calculation should yield 120 bars. And as I need just 32 for the forge, yeah, fun stuff. I also kind of started to think about fishing as I saw all these bubbles in the water. Why haven't I done some fishing? I don't know. It's nice relaxing activity kind of made me think about this old TV show where guy went to live in Britain's countryside. Kind of like a real life Stardew Valley as he started to grow crops, get animals, go fishing and so much more. You should check it out, it's called River Cottage I think. Oh my god I just googled it. It's from 1999, holy crap I am old. Day 22, I realized it will take forever to get just the 32 iron ingots, so I decided to go after another V carrier. The one who lives in the flowery meadow, which I still did not turn into a landfill. But if I will be able to get her, I can start to grow my own oregano. Day 23. I was glad that I chose the crossbow to assault the herbal hippie whose name I forgot as a lot of her attacks are long range and it just is difficult to close in the distance especially when she summons those mobs. I was able to take her out and I started to gather shocking amount of blood rose and if you saw my previous two videos you know how much I prefer the blood rose potion over the healing salve. Overall I have to say I am impressed with how focused the devs are on quality of life improvements and look I cannot show everything because I'm really trying to cram in as much in these 100 days as I can but also if I would have to deal with some other players raiding my castle while I'm out doing things that would just not work out. I managed to kill a golem and by the time I got back to the base I had 33 iron bars waiting for me. Night 24 I managed to get to the cemetery and I was unpleasantly surprised by the fact that the forge did not give me access to the 
are in sight. What the hell? So I decided to go with the sword as I was skeptical about its ability to take down the undead units and the necromancer V carrier on top of the hill, but I was kind of able to do it. I have to say the previous experience with the game must have helped in some way, but of course my timing could not be better as it seems the blood moon is upon me and I need to carry all this back to my base. Night 25 was Blood Moon and as I had to return from the cemetery and craft a few things, it took me a while to get to the farmlands and start chasing my favorite tailor. You see, I wanted to go after her as this will allow me to start processing fabric and I had the armor workbench from defeating the bandit leader but it would require yarn to be made and so I'm guessing the additional armor might require that as well. I got a little too excited as I thought I might be able to take down the Sun Priestess too, but she's so annoying with those healing spells. I might have to deal with her a bit later, or maybe try the crossbow instead. Day 25 I stayed at the village hoping for one more try with the Sun Priestess, and so I gathered resources and made some bacon. Mmm, bacon. Oh cool, a second tier gem, nice! Night 26 I went up to the monastery and I have to say nuns are tricky at this point especially because of how good at healing they are and even the basic units with the shield and axe I feel like they have much further reach with their attacks. So you can understand my frustration when I made it up there and I realized that the indicator of where the sun priestess is is showing not the top of the monastery but somehow she made it out of the village. When? How? What? So I took a horse with good stats and made it back home as apparently once you defeat some boss you can now turn your mount into undead horse which will serve you without being able to die. Because if you would have watched my previous videos you would have seen that the humans which I possessed and mind controlled somehow killed the horse at my base. Night 27 I knew I would have to go into the farmlands again. A. I depleted all my iron and B. I would need cotton but there was some Thing that I was mortified about and that was the bear in the cave. The bear that gave me so many problems. I still had the 76% blood from the nun which empowered my spells and with the crossbow equipped I had it inside the cave and I don't know maybe it's all the previous times I ended up as the bear's chew toy or something but I was able to take him down. Yogi is officially off my kill list. Are they lowering the difficulty on some of these engagements? What is going on? Oh, did I really learn some stuff from my previous sessions with the game? I will need to investigate further. Night 28. Interesting thing happened as I made the minor garlic resistance brew and I forgot again to empty the additional bags as I had Hellscarion in one of them. And the teleporter surprisingly worked. I know that you can have weapons and potions but really last time I tried something like this and used the teleporter I had to actually return back to my base and drop off all the inventory. Maybe it was a bug. So with that I traveled to the farmland and I started to bother the local farmers. You call this pesticide free? I cannot stop coughing. Oh, it's the garlic. Well, I already killed you and your family, so sorry? I decided to head into the iron mines before the night was over as I was hoping to pick up a few stacks of iron and maybe mess with Meredith as if you kill her now she will actually give you a spell from the new school of magic that will shock you with how good it can be. Day 28 is going to go down as one of the most hilarious fuck ups of this playthrough yet. So while being at the mines I saw the UV carrier approaching and of course I had no intention to fight Meredith. But the skeletal general got involved and apparently he got bumped and now he is another boss or beat carrier and he's no longer just a farmable unit for skirt stone. Anyhow, as the two of them started to fight, I joined in from distance. And now that I'm going through the footage, I'm just realizing how stupid I was to not use the crossbow. So the fun part was that the skeletal general was able to defeat the archer and I defeated the skeletal general. But some stupid skeleton shot me and I got killed. So I was not able to harvest both of them and I lost all of my loot. You cannot make this shit up. Not your professional walkthroughs is the best choice I ever made for naming anything ever. Death is inevitable.
Night 29, I was able to return to the mines and collect my items, and I left with like 8 full stacks of iron, but the shame of the previous day still lingered in the air. So when I was leaving the mines and having opportunity to attack the Sun Priestess, I passed because my blood was almost depleted and fighting her with her goons would not go well. Promised to the dark. Night 30, I spent at the base doing a lot of expanding. Now normally at night I'm terrorizing everyone with my terrible fighting style. I call it the crouching twilight, but that is not important. The reason why I wanted to do this is to start preparing for some future expansions and preparations as I was hoping that I would be able to start setting up production rooms to reduce the quantity of items required for crafting and so on. Night 31, I continued with the work on my base as I know that I will never win any beauty contest, but I was able to put down the tailoring bench and start making the first piece of the new armor set, and I will most likely spend the day traveling to Farmstead, so at night I can gather hopefully some cotton seeds, as so far I got nothing, and I'm not sure if the merchants by the base sell seeds for the crops. I might have to find merchants at the Farmstead. Night 32 was International Garlic Bread Day, as I have to say the debuff stacked up by this one crop is ridiculous. I was able to get my hands on a lot of cotton, which is great because I will surely need it to craft my new armor set, but also few hits from even the normal units and my health was melting away, faster than the glaciers at the poles. So it was not surprising that I got killed. Great. I won't die from battle with a bee carrier, but one guy who don't know how to wash his mouth after eating garlic bread and I am dead. Night 33 I spent at the base working on two pieces of the hollow fang armor and I also started to plan the next V carriers that I want to fight. I knew I wanted to take down the undead boss in the iron mine so I can craft the scythe. I just had really good experience with the weapon. This I would try to follow by going after the Sun Priestess, because by killing her I can start making fabric for completion of the Hollow Fang armor, and after that I will need to think what to kill next without getting killed myself. Day 33 was a total failure, as all I wanted to do is find that stupid V carrier, and instead I got killed by the roaming humans in the mines. The second time I got killed, and I cannot make this up, was when I again caught the archer and the undead boss fighting, and I was about to kill the archer when she kind of like made a dash, and that killed me. I mean, seriously, what the hell? Night 34, I was back at the mines and I was trying to fight the archer, but to get her alone is just annoying, and trying to make her follow me does not really work that well. So I had to go and fight the skeletal commander, and I got killed almost so many times I cannot count it. I guess it's really easier to engage them when they are fighting amongst themselves, but it's another boss down. Now, to target the sun priestess, and because I will need iron again, I know I will have to return for the archer. Day 34, I finally completely ran out of blood which really sucked as I had to look for a deer to eat and thankfully there was one. I still kind of wonder why when you are drinking the blood you are immune to sun but not the enemy attacks. Day 35, I tried on multiple occasions to take down the sun priestess and once I got killed when I was really close and then I was just desperately trying to kill her but I think maybe the reaper might be a good option as she likes to remain stationary and that might help me out. Night 36. Man, I missed having this weapon. Now, despite not being able to find the Sun Priestess, I was able to come across my fellow Frosty V Carrier, and if I defeat him, I can start making prison cells. Now, this V Carrier has never been much of a hassle for me, but he does have a new way of arranging his tiers of attacks, and so trying to keep some distance is a viable option. I used the sight, but I'm sure even the crossbow would work, however he does like to come you close and snuggle. Quiet. I told him all the frost magic is going to give him cold. Night 37, or evening 37 if you prefer, started with me like not wasting edge. any time, as I found the Sun Priestess in a location I deemed optimal, and so I started the fight, and I have to say the Iron Scythe or the Reaper was a great success. Thanks to her stationary way of fighting, the Scythe was much more effective than Crossbow, and I did not have to close in the distance as much, allowing me to even kill one of the soldiers while I was sucking on her blood, and when I was done, the explosion killed him. Taste of knowledge. 
Night 38, I tried to go after one person trade to deal with vampires and because he was really not interested in my Twilight fanfiction novel, we started to fight and yeah, not good. Even with the full set of the Hollow Fang armor set, I was not doing well. Maybe it's the crossbow or I need a different weapon. Night 39. Ah, Tristan, revenge is sweet. Sweet like 93% blood I was able to gather with my stupid luck during the previous day while stalking you from the shadows. I'm quite sure this was a major help in defeating him, but the sight did its work too. And now, I have this new power which I cannot wait to try as it will tell me who has what blood and what percentage of it he carries. It should really help me set up my new blood bank. Now I just need to find the damn V carrier that gives me the power to possess people I since I can make prison. But holy crap, if I will need to guide someone from Dunley Farmlands to my place, it will be a nightmare. Should I start to consider moving already? Night 40 is one of those nights where things are going well despite facing a brand new boss and new set of challenges and even managing to defeat the boss. But as the militia kept mixing into the engagement, they were slowly chipping away not from only the V carrier's health but also from mine, which was not really that great as once again I was killed moments after the V carrier and then when I tried to find him, I don't know if the game had some sort of glitch but when I actually located him on the map, all I saw was as if this blood spirit and he was not manifesting himself properly while walking around. If that is even him. You see, I knew it was dangerous to just attack these knuckleheads in cloaks. I knew it would be something sinister, but I cannot fight him during the day, damn it. Day 40. I still had the same issue with my assassin and so because I was so close to Lysandra, Lysandra? I don't know. It's a crazy chick on top of another cemetery and if I defeat her, I get to make Skirt Stone. So I started to make my way up that hill. Night 41 until day 41. I started to fight the evil enchantress and I don't know, maybe again previous experience paid off as I was able to deal with her fairly easily, however I thought to myself, okay, now I have time so I can go find that idiot in cloak and I have spent almost half of the night looking for him. This was unfortunately followed by me trying to kill him twice as our fight continued into the day and I don't know but maybe sight is not the right tool for him and maybe I should try crossbow or something. This is going to be annoying to figure out. Day 41 continued as I stalked the V carrier and I knew if one weapon is not working, I will have to try another one. I had also issue as I had to use low quality deer blood, but I attacked the V carrier and when he had to go around this small body of water, I thought, oh well, in the wolf form, I can jump across and well, bullshit. Night 42. So our battle continued and it was quite challenging but the crossbow did work its wonders on him. The issue was that when I marked another brand new V carrier which is new to the game and this one would grant me access to the study which I so desperately needed in order to start upgrading the armor and weapons even more. Oh, and the funniest thing is that the V carrier dropped Unsullied Heart. I mean, come on. Problem was that I was led into this iron mine of sorts and there were these strange rocky creatures and because I did not have the maze on me, you see, I knew it would be useful. They almost killed me. I thought maybe the entrance to her study is through the cave or something, but apparently I was terribly wrong. Day 42 was a mess as I got separated from my horse and I had to go way back to pick him up. I somehow stumbled upon a dog with 99% blood, starting to understand why everyone says that they can eat their Labrador puppies, as they are so delicious. But I keep trying to find my next target and the worst thing was that the next night is blood and my backpack is full. 
Night 43, another Blood Moon, and this one I have spent inside of a library, which I was finally able to find. Unfortunately, the librarian was not really one of those hot playboy ladies. Just from walking inside and destroying her desk, she went a little crazy. Unfortunately, the site was not the solution, and so my first attempt failed. Keep in mind, I was still riding high from the 99% poppy blood. I tried even second time, and surprisingly, I did not get killed, well I almost got killed twice. The crossbow was far more effective, but I ran out of blood and HP, and maybe even the spells I was using were not the best. Now I think I will return home to drop off the stuff and then come back and try again. Night 44 I had to try again and well the big problem I have is that those slimy spirits that keep crawling around the floor that she keeps summoning are healing her. So I need to somehow focus them but it's almost impossible. But maybe use the sword, maybe that will be solution. Nah, I don't think so, but something else has to be. Night 45, I was at the castle doing little prep work in order to see if some guide I was able to find on YouTube should work. So I started to fix my gear, make axes, believe it or not, and I also got some potions and healing salves. Night 46, holy crap, I cannot believe this worked. So the guide basically says that in order to deal with the creepy crawlies, you need to use the axe with its speed attack, and they actually do a great job and they are also able to stack. This prevented the librarian to keep healing herself. It's true, I did take a lot of damage, but yeah, study is unlocked, scroll making too. So guess now I have to go across the Dunley farmlands to a brand new location added with the update. Quartz mine and another brand new boss so I can start making glass because every vampire should be able to see him herself in the mirror for what a fashionable trendsetter he or she is. Day 46, I worked my way through the mines as I wanted to explore this location, but I also find my next meal. And I did, and thankfully, she worked as a glass blower inside of a building? Man, it was so freaking hot. I was sweating dust, right? Because I don't have my own blood. Do vampires sweat? Never mind. It took me a while, but she is now defeated, and that means I can start processing glass. Night 47, I continued to raid the quartz mine for its riches as I realized, hey, another V carrier is close, and so I paid a visit to my favorite geomancer. Boy, was she not happy to see me, especially because I brought the mace and I knew what to do and how her abilities work thanks to my previous experience with her. Therefore, after a while, I was able to get through her tough exterior break her barriers and get to that juicy neck of hers. I think I chipped my fang on her as I did not bother to wipe off all those pebbles on her skin. Night 48, I did a lot of reading. I mean, I had a whole bunch of books prepared to be studied and I learned few fun things. I was especially happy about the merciless Hellofang upgraded armor pieces and the weapons. So I spent most of the night crafting and studying in order to be prepared for the upcoming battles. Night 49, well, what can I say? I can handle some of the new V carriers, but this stupid archer in the mines, even despite having a good start and engaging her by one of the crates, which kept spewing out the chaos magic and damaging her in the process, all those minions of hers always get in the way and I got cornered in a stupid spot and died. Day 49. It was great, because I was able to defeat the archer in the mines, however the idiot that I am, an unimaginable thing happened and I did not hit the record. You know, I blame in this case V Rising because every day and night I record, I had to keep disconnecting and reconnecting to the server of my game and this alone takes so much time. Why the hell is there no pause button? I mean, on a PvE server or PvP 
server, sorry. Uh, I understand why it would not be there, but it should be possible to do this, damn it. I will have to either fight her again or... I don't know. Night 15. I went to raid one of the villages as I wanted to get my hands on more scrolls and the other resources. It was a good choice as I was able to find books for the tailoring for and that would certainly help me. Now I started to look on the map to find the farmer's market as I was hoping to also be able to get cotton seeds and other fancy things but I don't know if I'll be able to sneak in during the day. Day 50, I managed to sneak into the farmer's market, but boy was it difficult. Not only are you super slow in human form, you also cannot jump or do anything, and with the minimal amount of shade I was able to find, and on top of it, the entire market being fenced around its parameter, I had to sneak into bushes, break the fence, turn back into human form, and then I almost died when I saw that the merchant is asking 48 silver for a single cotton seed. I see the inflation is hitting the gaming worlds as well. Oh, careful now. That's Night 51, I was messing around my base as I had to build the portal so I can unlock blueprint for stone coffin. However, more importantly, I made my tailoring room so I was able to start making the better armor and also... I was able to craft some fancy schmancy jewel from skirt stone to empower my magic. If I will raid the quartz mines even more and craft more glass, I will be able to upgrade this gem further. So I think I will go to the quartz mines and then do cotton raiding and see how it will turn out. 952, I raided the quartz mine and well, I came across total of 722 quartz. I was using my ability to try and identify the stronger blood donor amongst the miners as if I have high quality blood from the villagers. I will be able to mine more resources but the best quality I was able to find was 16% and I would rather keep the 95% I have picked up earlier. After that I went to one of the farms and even saw Jade the vampire hunter but I was not feeling it yet. However I do want to try those pistols. Day 52, I continued to raid the cotton farms and I was pleased with the fact that I came across so many chests. One house even spawned one of the rare gold ones with some cotton seed and having the pouch for money, that meant that I can carry silver coins and no longer take damage. Night 53, I continued to raid more of the cotton farms and kill militia as I was hoping they might drop some books. But unfortunately nobody was willing to share really good things so I'll have to go back home to process all these things and start to look for another target. Night 54, I continued to process the resources at my base and I decided to mark my next target and from my previous experience with the roaming frost terror in the frozen region, I was not looking forward to it at all, but I will need to wait out the day until I can engage it as engaging it during the daytime is a really bad idea and last time I tried to fight it during the day in my previous two videos, I actually got frozen by its attack and the sun was able to deep fry me inside of the ice. I'm not really sure what type of a cooking method this is, but I can tell you I was extremely delicious. 955. Ah, yes, the frost terror. Man, I used to hate going after this thing, and rightfully so. And so we are going to pretend that the first death did not really happen, and when I was victorious during the second engagement, that is what true. Counts. I also noticed that while I was gathering hollow wood, which is a brand new resource, and since the frozen region is rich in fur, wood, and other resources, I might stay the day for research purposes, of course. Oh yeah, kind of a funny thing happened as I killed the frozen terror. This ultimate ability with the blizzard kept going on, and I was not sure if I will be able to drink its blood, as the frozen explosions beneath me were freaking me out.
magical. Night 56, I worked on getting the medium bags. Unfortunately, one of them was not for the coins, so I will still need to carry around the small pouch. This sucks. I fixed up my gear and crafted more advanced magic amulets to empower further my spells. My next target is the shepherd, and despite having to fight him inside of the church, I know I will need holy resistance potion, and so all these preparations are required. Now to just not fuck up the fight. Day 56, I had a little brain fart as I forgot that the portal I built serves as a teleporter, so I did not have to go to another location, and unfortunately the vampire hunter was blocking my way to the monastery, so I'll have to wait once again. Night 57, so I went to the monastery and I still love that I can get some scourge stone here, but boy, so many tainted hordes. It's almost as if they were recruiting in prison or something. I managed to keep killing the nuns and the religious zealots, but none of them were having decent percentages of blood. So when I went to battle the boss inside of the church, I think they still slightly updated his attacks as now he can spam more of those holy orbs that slap me down. I was able to take him out with the scythe, but the crossbow would have been better probably. After I killed him, I killed everyone at the office. Huh? What? Oh, uh, I, I killed everyone at the church. I mean, all these ladies and nobody helped him and nobody had a decent blood. One shocking thing was how they removed all the quartz from back of the monastery. I guess you have to keep farming the quartz mine now. I started to look for my next target and I'm not sure how this is going to go as in my previous video I was able to milk the fact that she kept getting stuck behind stones and I cheesed the hell out of the combat. Night 58, one word, yeah. well technically one spell, Lord of the Damned. Yeah. I cannot believe how much I fell in love with the damn thing, especially during my session with the Spider Queen in my previous videos. The spell was amazing at absorbing the attacks of the Vampire Hunter, one and it always gave her alternative targets to focus. So I did cheese the fight with her, well technically no, I just used a really effective spell, and I know what you guys are thinking. But Max, everyone knows that the Lord of the Damned is great, yeah. and I agree. But think back when you used to play video games and there was no internet. If you were stuck on something, you had to ask some of your friends who were playing the same game. And what would happen if nobody played the game you did? This is why internet is so great. All the pictures of boobs, I mean all the guides and knowledge you have access to. Night 59, I spent preparing for the next V carrier, Octavian, or what is the name of the militia leader. So I started to craft merciless pistols, crossbow, fixed up my gear, and started to craft some jewels to enhance few abilities. Night 60, normally milestones on this channel are celebrated by me doing something stupid, but with the preparation, the militia leader stood no chance. I have to admit, the skeleton spawn in from my shield did very little to distract him, but they did distract his reinforcements and that is important. And as I drew his blood, I thought, maybe it is really time to go to the secrets of Gloomroth region and see what is all this hubbub about. I marked my first target and immediately the smell hit my nose. I don't know what to think about this place, but it looks like someone spilled the T-Virus on some kind of Pokemon and their trainers. I was able to get 95% blood from one of these mutated spider squirrels or whatever the hell this creature is and these steampunk Fallout Universe units kept attacking me and holy crap they can do a lot of damage. I will definitely need some new weapons for this region, maybe. Day 16, I was exploring the Gloomroth region and holy shit these things can ambush you from the river and attack you. Damn, the worst thing is they can really pack a mean punch and you would lose each beat really quickly. Night 61, I worked my way through this massive complex where even the robots were moving around and I managed to destroy one of them. The issue was the V carrier. Her attacks were shock and fire based and she had these orbs that followed me around and she was also able to jump close to me and close in the distance and when she started using her flamethrower, not even the ward of the dam was able to save me and I unfortunately died. Even bigger problem was 
that I did not discover the portal in Gloomrod region yet, so I had to travel from the farmstead back to the factory to retrieve my gear. Day 61, I wanted revenge so much I did not even notice that the next night will be blood moon. And so I started to fight her again. This time switching between Reaper and Crossbow and using a lot more magic. Holy crap, she has jetpack! And even a Gatling gun. And here I am with a stupid sword. Well, just as the 962 started, I was victorious. I guess I can spend the time traveling back home. Wonderful. I decided to stay at the factory and I just kept killing workers and robots. And I tried to gather as many of these tech scraps, paper pieces, and scroll pieces that I can find. I noticed that using the pistols on Gloomrod units was working, but when I tried to use them anywhere else, they did not have the same effect. 963, I worked around the base processing resources, gathering resources. Man, I'm going to need oil and silk. Which means going after the Spider Queen, and I'm not looking forward to that, especially because of the new form of the curse which hides the map, making it impossible for you to find your way home. Day 63, I made a fabricator, which is a blueprint you get after defeating Ziva, the engineer, and it's pretty nifty, as this is where you can also print your own money. But I will require the blueprints for that. And I need to start making these containers in which I can capture the sludge. So because a lot of iron will be required, I might have to go on a mining expedition. Night 64 was kind of stupid, because I went into the iron cave, and mining the iron as a bear is quite ineffective and unfortunately I managed to wake up an iron golem that killed me. Night 65 was far more productive as I gathered together 15 stacks of 200 pieces of iron and I will be able to smelt it, but also realizing that the cotton is all over here and I have the extra storage for it, I continued to terrorize the farms and gather decent amount and also do some fishing as I swear I will need to either get the hollow wood or come up with some better way to get oil. Night 66. So I wanted to target another bee carrier, but along the way I got stopped by this flesh golem, which attacked the Rustlock village, or what's it called. So I decided to help out and got almost killed in the process. I then proceeded to kill everyone and I can find in the village and steal a lot of things. All these houses have usually scrolls and even silver coins. Day 66, I was at the village still trying to do my own thing, but somehow the Blade Dancer, the carrier, showed up and we started to fight. And I swear if this house was not there, I would be dead 10 more times, but she eventually got me as I tried to fight her in the shade, like they said in the movie 300. But there weren't enough arrows, I guess. Now I have to make my way here, punish her for this, and try to find the master from Fallout 1 somewhere. As I incorrectly assumed that the next V carrier is actually not human in mechanical form, but some sort of mutant just from looking at the little picture of the mutated squirrel. 967, I took revenge on the Blade Dancer, and I have to say that out of all the new bosses, she so far possessed the least amount of trouble for me. Sure, I died because I was looking for shade, but when I was fighting her at night, I thought I was doing quite well. <laughs> when she died, she said she likes to be on top, and well, with my body, she would have to be, or else it would be dead by Snoo Snoo. I'm used to being on top. What'd they die of? Crushed pelvises. Yes! Oh, thank you, Lord in heaven. After lengthy famputations, I, Famputer, have decided the fate of the men. Famputer sentences them to death! <laughs> By Snoo Snoo! Yeah! yeah! 
I went to some pools of rebirth and I saw another V carrier, but it was not the one I was looking for. Night 68 is going to go hands down as my best performance out of the whole video. Honestly, I thought that the V carrier boss is some big mutant and not a mech, but holy crap, despite the difficulties, I was able to take him out. And once again, after he died, I was almost taken out by all the idiots which kept spawning in and I somehow managed to survive. When I was leaving the pools, they were all just scattered and filled with loot that I had no more space for. Kind of wish there were more bags that I could use. I was being really naughty as I worked on getting my first two legendary weapons which I'm hoping will help me deal with the next target. I got legendary reaper and a crossbow and I really do wonder if they're gonna be able to take down the wandering guy in the forsaken woods so I can unlock the blueprint for his veil or cloak or what's it called and I can move freely around the forsaken woods without getting lost. After that, I'm hoping that I will be able to target the Spider Queen so I can start making silk for better armor. Damn, I'm actually making decent progress so far. Night 70. Man, this new Curse of the Woods is absolutely terrifying thing. So I was looking up how to deal with the Wandering Bee Carrier, and good thing I did. I was trying to find him in the mist, but instead I came across sticks. So yeah, I ran with my tail tucked between my legs. I was eventually able to find my target, and by using the legendary spear and combination of boss attacks, day 70, I was able to get him. Now to find a way out of this hellhole. Night 71. So I had a change of heart as I wanted to go and see the spider king in order to test out one theory which I read about with the new update that is Gloom Rods or Secrets of Gloom Rods. So previously if you had the summoning chamber in which you can get rats and other creatures, currently you are able to use them to summon spider legs. And if you have few of these summoning chambers and you spawn the spider links, you should be able to farm silkworms. I intentionally cleared out the entire cave and I had 32 silkworms before I fought the spider queen. And thanks to her abilities and not changing that much her attack patterns, I was able to get her. And at the end, I left the cave with 52 silkworms when I was done. So repeating this cave would be a nightmare. I really need to test the method with the spider links and I need to find out how the hell to get out of here. I marked the target in Gulon to try and get out, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping I will be able to reunite with my horse. What I did not actually notice is the fact that entering the spider cave will actually remove the curse of the woods and when you leave you do have a vision of the area so you can somehow navigate you know before it again fogs up your entire map. Night 72 I went to the base and had to process a lot of things and I have to say it's true summoning the spider links is working and for each wave you get six spiders and when you kill them that is equal to six silkworms which is just mind-blowingly effective. That is an amazing farming return. This allowed me to get the silk production up and running and I was able to make three pieces out of my new purple armor set because nothing says sexy more than compression suit in a purple especially when my vampire has no ass. Starting to wonder what made the lady so crazy about the twilight in the first place. Night 73 I finished my Dawnguard armor set and headed out for Duke of Peloton. Sorry Peloton. It's those stupid commercials. Anyhow, I was able to travel through Gloomrod and I started thinking back when DLCs used to be like this. A lot of content, new world, new units, new enemies, and not just stupid cosmetics. Night 74. Three goddamn fights with this oversized toad. The biggest problem is that guides on YouTube are out of date 
and Duke of Peloton now spawns even the green toads, and you do not have much time to deal with them. I was able to eventually kill the damn thing, but I died twice. Oh, and you have to keep the cloak on so the fog is not obscuring your vision, or you cannot perform attacks from distance, which sucks, because the cloak increases your stats at least, like health and so on and such. But it's done, and now I can make a bigger pouch for coins and print out fake money. Night 75 was a blood moon, and so I spilled blood werewolf blood. Unfortunately, due to logistics, I arrived at the village of Jacob's fan club at night, which is okay as long as you don't try to fight two of the fans at the same time. That is definitely a bad idea, but I managed to prevail and make my way to the chief of the village. And our battle was quite epic. Well, it would be if that idiot would stop eating all the people and keep healing himself. But eventually, as he ran out of snack, he also managed to ran out of HP. And uh, unfortunately, he did not manage to ran out of fleet. Seriously, you guys ever take a bath? I mean, I want to be a good bloodsucker here, but god damn it, you guys really need to shower every now and then. I then made my way to the quartz mine and harvested some resources, as now it's time to go away and start to forge some currency, as that is another reason why Duke of Peloton is important, as you can start getting that YouTube commercial money. Night 76, tonight on MTV Cribs, we see as Edward or what's his name has spider infestation problem and has to do chores around his home. This is then followed by him formulating a crazy plan to go to the sulfur mines followed by the copper mines as his fake money printing machine actually works. Night 77, man for a sulfur mine this place does not have a lot of sulfur, at least the copper mine is full of the resource and I have to say even playing with the corpse pile is no longer fun and I need a brand new challenge. Night 78 and day 78 were both spent in preparation as I had to return to the Forsaken Woods where I would battle another beat carrier and if I am able to defeat him I will be able to start making spectral dust. This I would then try to follow by going after the cultistic blacksmith and with that I would be able to complete the third act in the video. Night 79 when there's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Vampire? Well, that's basically what I did. I went to fight the ghost in the town of spirits and I followed that by fighting another V carrier. And goddamn, I got lucky because one more scratch and I would be toast. Or roll dust. You know what I mean. Anyhow, I think I will go to Gloomra to gather more scrolls and scrap and then it's maybe time to start moving house. I'm coming to hell! <laughs> Night 80, I got a little upset as I found this mine for copper and sulfur in Gloomra, which had far more copper and sulfur than the two previous mines I ventured into, so I could have saved a lot of time. But oh well, now to make it home and find a new castle location and target our blacksmith, so I can make dark silver weapons. Wait, are these enhanced weapons not better than dark silver weapons? Night 81, I spent by doing more prep work and I went to pick up my horse. Hey, don't judge me, but I placed like 15 water filled bags onto him so that he can last for very long. Plus, it's much faster now to travel on horseback than in wolf form. Night 82, moving time. Now look, normally I would keep this for the second video, but not knowing when that will be released, since when I was unemployed it took me 3 weeks to make one, but now with work and all things going on, I need at least 2 months. And look, I'm trying to cram in as much as I can. I was contemplating building the second base by the city near the silver mines, but as they have undergone a massive change and now you have to sneak in by some tunnel and you cannot enter them through the front gate, I thought to myself that this will not work. So instead I scouted these two locations in the farmstead and I chose one of them. A. The quartz mine and the iron cave is close. Getting sulfur and copper from Gloomrod is now a thing and with the dimensions and the space being offered I will have much bigger castle and also I will be able to invest into the second floor and have a beautiful outlook on the lumber mill near me where cotton and other resources are available and oh a deer with 93% blood well thank you very much. Night 83 
kind of proves that I chose a great spot as despite not bringing any letter and finding out I got nothing at my old base so that I can upgrade my castle heart, the farmstead is full of deer and wolf and also one numbnuts who forgot to empty his bag for like the millionth time so I had to go back in order to get transported to the portal and get to my old castle as this will definitely help me transport the things a little bit more efficiently. Night 84. The third act is finished. God damn am I impressed with myself. I mean sure I'm a total idiot for going after the occultist blacksmith with zero healing potions and sure I also finished what I can consider first section of my new castle but damn it feels so good that I got another V carrier of my teeth in me. And all it took is looking up one guide and targeting those pesky spectral weapons so that there's not like a dozen of them attacking me along with the blacksmith himself. But yeah, I managed to get him and that means dark silver is now a thing. Now to start making silver resistance potions so I can venture into the mine and survive having in my pocket next to my hardwood something shiny. The problem is, I kind of ran out of blood and now I need to find some ASAP. How many deaths now? A hundred? A thousand? Day 84. <laughs> I mean, Mel Brooks is a genius when it comes to making comedy, but holy crap, you cannot write this stuff. So of course I ran out of blood and I barely made it out of the spectral village. But as I found a wolf that I can suck dry and restore my HP with, Sticks showed up out of nowhere, I even did not have a visual confirmation on him and he attacked me with his ranged attacks and killed me with one hit. This is a pure comedy gold. Night 85, I had to go to retrieve my things and get to the castle so I can expand my base and start to set up initial crafting room as to just get hold of all this will require a substantial amount of getting stone and not in the fun way. Night 86, I kept moving around the items as I would need to set up alchemy workshop to make silver resistant potion and go into the mine so I can start working on my next step, dark silver weapons. This therefore means that me, a person who is spending nights by remodeling, I know my neighbors must love me as I keep hammering away and chopping down trees at night, but a solid foundation is a rock upon which I will build my castle and you should call me Ishmael or something. Just ignore me. I'm recording this late at night and I will be editing this very early in the morning. Night 87. Look, don't get mad. I went to the castle as I found out for silver resistance potion, I will need the water filled glass potion bottle and it would be faster for me to set up a teleporter and travel back home to deliver them to my new base rather than setting up a whole forge, going to the quartz mine and smelt glass for me to then turn into the flasks themselves so that I can go into the silver mines. Night 88. Can you smell it? The smell of a fresh new schematic. Mmm, how much I yearn for that smell. But now it's silver time, and boy, these mines have been reworked. So it seems like the slave masters are keeping the miners in check, and if you kill the slave masters, you do not need to fight the miners themselves as they will try to escape. Fun thing however is that despite me taking on so much silver, even the silver resistance potion was not able to help me protect myself, so I will need to drop off some of it. Wait out day 88 and on night 89 release the prisoners and use them as a distraction so I can assault the V carrier who is protecting the mines and hopefully not die as this is going to be one awkward retrieval of inventory otherwise. Night 89, patience is a virtue or so I told. On the other hand, I am undead, so I will be here for an annoyingly long time. And this strange transition is to tell you that I waited for nightfall to liberate the prisoners and use them as a cannon fodder for the next speed carrier to occupy him partially while I kept bombarding him with attacks and he kept turning me into an icicle. But the deed is done. He is dead. I can now craft even better cloak and I have almost 12 full stacks of silver. So, um, yeah, how the hell am I going to process it now? I need a forge. Every castle needs a forge. And since the Gloomrod mine is so close, I can go there for copper and stone and then on my way back maybe stop at the quartz mine. 
Day 89. Holy crap, what a welcome at the mines. I did nearly died so many times I lost the count. I still don't understand how did I not turn into dust. The problem is none of these miners have good blood and next night is blood moon and here I am stuck inside of a cave. Well at least at the quartz mines I was able to use the time to find a really good blood donor from the miners which allowed me to exponentially grow the stockpile of quartz extracted. Last time I was here I barely left with 700 and now I was getting close to 1000 quartz. Now I will need some time to make a bunch of furnaces and smelt all this stuff. Crap, I'm sure I will run out of scourge stone due to something. Night 91 I started the whole smelting shebang and when I realized that they changed around a couple of things I might still run out of scourge stone. So now in order to make spectral dust you need it and in order to get dark silver you need spectral dust and not scourge stone itself as it used to be. So now I need a ton of bones for bone dust and also this spectral crystal. I think I might have to go to the Forsaken Woods. I went to the marketplace wondering if I can get those cotton seeds so with my pockets full of silver coins I came in and damn nearly impaled the merchant on a stake as she was not selling cotton seed. What the actual hell? How often do these knuckleheads rotate their stock? Night 92. I finally turned my horse into the undead mount as I will now be able to call him to me whenever I want to, which will make traveling so much convenient. Then I tried to go and fight the elementalist and I did not want it to wait for the next night, which might have been a mistake on my end as I should have made a potion for healing. Now I was making a decent progress but having low blood quality and no healing cells was not a good idea. Night 93, I really wanted to go fight the elementalist, but I thought to myself that if I stay behind and get the anvil up and running, I can make dark silver weapons, and so I did, and thanks to the accumulated wealth of resources which I brought over, I was able to make dark silver reaper, crossbow, and also sword. Night 94 was a good night. I traveled to the elementalist, and I showed her my brand new toys, and I think I could smell the fear from her, as she started to heavily rely on the frozen shield during which the giant fire orb kept chasing me around. Like before Gloomrod, she did not use to use this as much, but goddamn am I glad I made a crossbow, as with her types of attacks, it would have been almost impossible to get up close and personal and try to attack her that way. I then started to make my way to the Harpy's Nest where I was hoping to tackle the next V Blood Carrier. On day 94 I was a little unpleasantly surprised when I turned on the tracking of blood and I found out that the Harpy Queen is at a different Harpy's Nest. Awkward! Night 95. I ran out of gem dust and I knew that harpies are a great source of it. So I went to hunt down the harpy mob and she was sniffing actually the gem dust. Not really sure what the hell was going on but apparently she was quite mad when I interrupted her. And so she started to summon a lot of reinforcements and with her chaos magic and all the harpies around me, my health started to melt so fast I was not able to keep up. I will probably need some sort of potion to boost my spells or something. Night 96, I traveled to the Forsaken Woods for more soul crystals and our dear soul taker kind of got triggered and I was not really trying to fight him as I just wanted to harvest the minerals but I had to show him for the second time who's the boss with my skin tight purple spandex. Seriously, you added secrets of Gloomrod, but you kept this armor in the game. On night 97, I started to wonder if I should go after the Harpy Queen again, or if I should try a different approach, as apparently in order for me to craft the super holy resistance potion, I will need divine grapes. And so I decided to order something off the menu, but where is this goddamn sommelier hiding? Night 98 kind of broke the immersion for me as I went to the vineyard and holy crap, whenever I started to harvest the grapes, harpies descended from the skies. But that did not really break the immersion for me. What did it for me was the comical fight reminding me of battles with like Crash Bandicoot as I battled the new V carrier in the wine cellar and he kept dropping barrels and if I would touch one of them, it would comedically smush me under it, like turning me into a wolf. The whole battle just did not kind of feel the vibe of the game and oh yeah, 
the stupid soldiers killed me at the crack of dawn, so I have to go retrieve everything. Night 99. Well, night 68 or whichever one, it was my proudest moment. This is probably my worst performance as I got killed three times overall. While trying to fight the Harpy Queen, getting to the Harpy Nest and just overall running into too many soldiers. And this all took a pretty horrible toll on all of my gear and my weapons as well. Day 99 was not getting any better as I was struggling to even retrieve my gear from the Harpy's Nest. Night 100, Redemption. Again, I lost count honestly at this point. I made it to the Harpy's Nest as I cleared it out until I started to fight the battle harder than Harpy and our battle was quite difficult, yet thanks to me switching my ultimate ability to the Chaos Spiders, so when the first wave of the small harpies showed up, I was able to clear out most of them and this allowed me to somehow survive. However, I was a little pissed when I had almost no HP left and that one harpy was bothering me, not allowing me to suck the blood of the big mama harp. So I drained her of all her juices, after which I switched to the bee carrier and I have to say, damn, I'm overall impressed. And with that, I will be concluding my 100 days in the carrier. Overall, I did far better than before and sure, a lot of time was sucked up by me moving around and I would have saved maybe some time but I still have like eight more V carriers to go on and with your continued support and depending on how much you will enjoy this video I will work on a possible sequel so this is the third video for V rising on the channel therefore thank you all for the amazing support on the channel this year and now I can finally tell everyone about the name of my upcoming Twilight fanfiction novel hey why are you running the credits I'm not done yet I'm sure they all want to hear about it.